recently I had a customer hit me up and want me to machine a custom set of parts for them. They're basically called dog bones in our sport of motocross that connects the rear shock to the swing arm of the bike. And there's a pivot point where these arms articulate. It's me and John Delahaye back again for Practical Machinist to bring you my second installment of the cam files. Come along for the ride with me and I'll show you how to make them. So here we have the model for the dog bone. I used a piece of drop that I had laying around to make my first prototype. So that's why the uh, dimensions are a little funky. So here we go into our stock. You'll see my stock sizes from the piece of drop. I put it in, I put it in fixed size box to put those dimensions in. This usually works when you have a piece of stock that's at a certain size and you want to program your part to be within that. I always go fixed size box. Uh, the height of the model position on Z, that's usually how I set my parts is like 25 thousandths or 10 thousandths. So I can take one finish pass with the face mill and the top will be done. I don't have any more roughing or tooling marks from an end mill doing it. Just a clean finish pass with the face mill. Um, I always set my origin as center, center of the stock. It's just what I do. That's how I prefer it. So this is gonna be our op one roughing, adaptive roughing operation. This is how I'm gonna remove the majority of the stock from the model. Um, right now we're running at a 60,000 step over and I'm leaving 5,000 stock to leave on the radius of the part. Uh, Axial stock to leave, I was set to zero and I set my heights to minus 10. I always like to take a little extra material off the floor of the part to leave me some room when I'm decking the other side on op two so there's no funny burrs left over and we can be at the right overall thickness. So that sense tends to work pretty well. Uh, here we are simulating the adaptive roughing, off, uh, roughing operation looks pretty good so yeah we're gonna go with that for now So when I run this boring cycle and mill out these holes, I like to interpolate counterclockwise. I think going counterclockwise kind of simulates climb milling as you're going into the material. You're not recutting chips. Uh, it's just a better way to do it than clockwise interpolating, I think. Also, you'll notice that I go all the way through the stock. This is to create a hole out the bottom side so we can indicate off that for op two and set our work offset. Uh, also here I will run a finish pass with my finishing end mill, half inch end mill. Uh, I go at a, like a nice medium speed at 8,000 RPM. It's a good surface foot that uh, creates a nice finish and I'm also taking 5,000 material radially, radially off the outside of that part. So when facing my parts, I usually always prefer to face on the x-axis. Again, I'll be taking that 10 thousandths of stock off the top of the model to leave a nice finish. Uh, I like to go pretty high RPM and pretty slow feed. 
I feel that gives a good finish for me, and I think it comes out great. So after our finish facing, it was time to finish our holes for the bolts and bushings to go through. Uh, my customer told me that was, there was a pretty close tolerance on these. Uh, he wanted them pretty close to size as possible. So I set the uh, compensation type to wear. I'm using wear comp on these contouring passes. I went with a quarter inch end mill. So I would have enough lead in and lead out into the holes to use wear comp. Um, and obviously after each pass, I was able to adjust my wear offset inside the controller until I got these holes to the perfect size. So as you see right here was the first initial pass, cleaning off all the roughed out stock. We're checking the hole. We're about two thou away from our target number so we're gonna go out minus one more thou on the wear diameter compensation just our offset we're making our last finish pass and our holes are to size now after that the last thing was to set the chamfers for the holes nice and big uh, the Customer requested 60 thousandths on these chamfers to be like the OEM dog bones that came off the bike that he measured. All right, so here we have our soft jaws that I've extruded from a 2D sketch of the silhouette of our part. Um, I have just set the work coordinate to center, simulating the, the shim on my jaws for this one, I'm going to use a 1 8 shim, just a parallel. For the pocket roughing, uh, I chose to go with step downs because I did not want my half inch end mill going to the bottom and then moving through full slot to the other side. I wanted it to slowly step down and full slot at 50,000 steps. I didn't want to break my tool or, or melt any aluminum or anything. So if you see right here when we simulate it, it's slowly stepping down, but it's still moving at 100 inches per minute. And after that, we're gonna go do our finish passes. This will finish the floor and the walls because when we rough this out, I left a 5,000 radial and axial stock to leave. I also had smoothing turned on and we're stepping over 50 thousandths. So we finished the floor and the walls here with our finishing end mill, smoothing turned on. And then the deburr for the soft jaws, this is a tool I use to clean up the edge and it's also an in-between between our floor finishing pass and our wear comp pass. So anytime I want to go back and use wear comp at the end of the program to get my jaws to size to fit my part, it's right there at the end. I can jump to it quickly on the controller. Here I have my compensation type set to wear. Smoothing is turned on. Same finishing end mill. Also, you'll see I have the bottom corner chain selected.
Now that we have our part profile milled into our soft jaws, our uh, dog bone fits in there like a glove. You can see I'm using a 40 thousandths thick shim to keep the chips out. Uh, I think using that wear comp on the finish pass for the jaws does a really good job at making the, the fixture repeatable. Every time I put a new part in those jaws, I won't have to re-indicate. Here's video of me indicating the part for the first time when setting up OP2. You get X and Y axis on zero both ways. I use the left hole on the dog bone as my work offset. You can see there we're at zero. And when we are at zero, zero, go into my controller. I'm going to set my G54X to zero and then set Y to zero to set my work offset for OP2. So here we have our remaining stock for uh, OP2. Like I've said before, I select the left hole as my work offset. How I did this was I went to setup and I set my Z axis and X axis directions. And after that, I went to my WCS origin and I selected uh, selected point. I always select a point on the, the model and I always select the top of the model on a circular feature that I can indicate. So right here, I clicked on the top line for the chamfer. So by doing that, when I set my Z height, I'll touch my tools off or probe them on top of the remaining stock, and then I will subtract the remaining stock, and then 10,000, since on op one we went 10 extra thousands. So that will get us right in where we need to be. Okay. Now when I do my rough facing, my strategy is to go as fast as possible with light step overs so there's not too much pressure trying to pull the part out of the jaws. So we're going to be about 200 inches per minute going back and forth just ripping all the remaining stock off just like that. After the remaining stock is roughed off, basically we're just going to chamfer the holes on the other side. And we're going to run a finish facing pass until we get to the correct overall thickness that we want. And then we'll just chamfer the outside edge. So for the overall quality of the dog bones and how they came out, I really couldn't be more happy with them. I thought the finish came out really good. Um, all the dimensions on them that I checked with the calipers came out perfect. Overall length, thickness, everything came out nice. And as far as I know, the, uh, the customer recently sent me a message thanking me for how good they came out. And he said he even QC checked them himself and everything was perfect. So... It was a win-win. Even Phoebe here thinks that they're uh, pretty dang sweet. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Have a good one.